Hello, it's Lisa from Flugent. Welcome to another Oxygen video. We'll continue to work with Oxygen Protocol Editor, and this time we'll look at a special type of blocks, the container blocks. These are execute if, else execute, repeat, and repeat while. These blocks allow you to add conditions to a protocol, which you can use to fork your protocol into different paths. We will start with the execute if, else execute, and repeat blocks. Let's start with an example and the corresponding diagram. In the beginning, we will set the pressure of the controller to 100 millibar. After this, the flow unit will measure the volume of liquid that flows through the channels. Based on this measurement, after 5 seconds, we will evaluate two conditions. If the volume is less than 0.5 microliters, we will increase the pressure by 50 millibar. If the volume is greater than 0.6 microliters, the protocol will reduce the pressure by 50 millibar. If both conditions are wrong and the volume is between 0.5 and 0.6 microliters, the pressure will remain unchanged. OK, let's create this protocol. We will use lineup simulation. We see here that the flow unit is connected to the flow easy number 2. By default, our protocol begins with a block reset all pressures. We will just go ahead and leave it there. We must first add any flow unit block to make the flow rate monitoring window appear in the overview tab. So at the very beginning of the protocol, let's select a block set parameters from the functions list. The last preparatory block before setting the pressure is the reset volume tool, which will be used to start a new volume measurement. We can now set the initial pressure. From the pressure option available for the second flow easy, we select the function set value and type in the initial pressure of 100 millibar. Next, we want this specific pressure to be maintained for 5 seconds, so we add the WAIT tool. Now, after the system has been running for 5 seconds, we will check our conditions. Let's introduce the first one using EXECUTE IF. Once the block is added to the protocol, we can see that it consists of one condition and multiple functions. These will be executed only if the defined condition is true. Remember, different devices have different conditions at their disposal. As we measure the volume with a flow unit, we select its corresponding item from the Instruments section. Then we simply drag and drop the volume condition into the Execute If box. The settings are activated immediately after we add the condition. Then we click on the less sign to enable the upper limit. The condition here is smaller than 0.5 microliters. We enter the value and click outside the block to enable the changes. Now we need to add an action which will be executed if the condition is true. To do this, we click twice on the execute if block and go to a separate block layer dedicated to this specific execute if. Here you can add any number of blocks, just like in the main protocol. In the Explorer tab, we can see that the execute if block is activated. From here, we can go back to work with the main protocol. Once again, we go back to the block execute if. Here we simply select the set value function, activate step mode, and type in 50 millibar. This means that the previous pressure value will be increased by 50 millibar. We can see that this block is now featured within the execute if block in the Explorer tab. You can expand as well as collapse this list. OK, so the first condition is ready. To create the second condition, we simply copy the first execute if block and change its parameters. This time, we want the volume to have an upper limit above which the pressure will be reduced.
at the moment, the conditions come one by one, so they will be checked accordingly, one after another. Let's change it so that they are checked simultaneously based on the same input data. To do this, we will use another kind of conditional block, which is called else execute. This block must be placed after the execute if block. Else execute works like any other container block, except there are no conditions. Let's cut and paste our second execute if block into it. As we can see in the Explorer tab, we now have a container inside the container. Let's also copy the weight block at the end so that the result can be properly presented on the graph. That's it. Let's run the protocol and see how it turns out in the Overview tab. As we can see, the second pressure-reducing condition has worked. To see if another condition would have worked and if there could have been a different outcome, let's repeat our checking procedure, let's say, three times. For that, we add the repeat container block. It allows you to set the number of repeats for the functions inside it. Let's cut and paste our recent blocks into this container. Do not forget to add a block called volume counter reset before the pause to make sure the measurement starts from zero again. This is what our protocol looks like now. Let's run it. We can see that the pressure was lowered twice and then raised once. That means that both of our conditions were met during the three different loops. Note that on the Runner tab we see the operation status of each block. For example, you can see which condition blocks were completed and which were skipped. We have now understood how execute if, else execute and repeat blocks work. Let us now take a look at repeat while. This block allows you to create a container whose steps will be repeated as long as the defined condition is true. This is what the logic of the new example looks like. We set the flow rate to an initial value and let the liquid flow until the volume reaches 0.5 microliters. Once this happens, the protocol is over. Let's create this protocol. We will again be using lineup simulation. We leave the block Reset All Pressures. Although we will work with flow rate, we add the Set Parameters block for Flow Easy at the beginning. This way the pressure is displayed in the Overview tab and is also recorded. Now we reset the volume counter. The preparatory part of the protocol is done. We can now set the flow rate to control the Flow Easy pressure through the flow unit. Now we can finally add repeat while. It consists of a condition and functions similar to execute if. Let's add our condition. Volume needs to be less than 0.5 microliters. As for the function, we will do a little trick here and add a weight block with a set time of 20 milliseconds. This means that the condition will be checked every 20 milliseconds until it is evaluated as true. At the end of the protocol, we simply copy the reset all pressures block. The protocol is ready. Let's test it. As we see, it took about six seconds in total for the fluid volume to become greater than 0.5 microliters. And the protocol is finished. That's it. No worries, you will find it simple once you try it yourself. And thanks to these two examples that we reviewed today, you should start feeling more confident using loops and conditions to design your own experiment. 
You can always turn to this video or contact us if you feel uncertain. In the next video, we'll look at a recirculation experiment to further apply the tools we use today. For now though, subscribe to our channel, download Oxygen, and see you in the next videos.